Okay, so I did a bit of tinkering with this piece of crap and it doesn't look good. So, now what I did is just attach a potentiometer about, uh, over this opto-isolator. I mean, my efforts to fake a uh, lower voltage on the output, um, but that didn't really work. So... <clears throat> What happened is when I cranked up the pot, it first nothing happened. I, I don't know how this compensates for it, but nothing happened. Um, unless there's like a default voltage. I don't know. Something nothing happened. So um, I think there's one volt over it is what I measured in standby. So maybe that's uh, another problem that this one uh, this tiny transistor down here doesn't uh, turn on and there's just passive uh, the lowest voltage the switching controller does so but at some point when I crank this up it rapidly starts to increase the voltage and when I overdo it like by just tiny amounts um, this thing gets very hot and goes into thermal shutdown like you can hear it like do some switching noises, you hear the high frequency and then it shuts down and then this thing is hot which I see with my thermal cam um, <clears throat> so but usually it isn't hot at all like this is the hottest component the resistor that I put in here in the air as a little load to um, discharge the capacitor in case the voltage goes too high and that's usually what happens when I crank it up and then it shoots up to over 50 volts, like all of a sudden, and then pfft, off. Um, that's happened two times now, and no matter how careful I am with the thing. So I don't think this is the way to go. So, um, But I also thought about uh, that voltage regulator. Now we have a 24 volt output. We don't need any current here. There's a 1 kilo ohm protection resistor in series anyway. So I will just use two 10k resistors, one like these, one to ground, one to 24 volts, and the middle would be 12 volt output. Then I put the um, regulator there, and then that output <laughs> goes into that pin. And so we at least get our 32 volts for the motor here. Well, at least that's the plan, which is what I'm gonna try next. And Let's see if that works. Okay, um, so I installed it. It did not blow up, but it also didn't work. So because apparently this regulator is uh, drawing quite a, a lot of current, and so we basically have like in standby mode, I think 800 millivolts here at the input and 500 on the output. And on non-standby mode, which, well, this kind of, apparently this is an analog circuit, not a digital one. So, um, it's just made to provide the correct voltage at 3.3 volts. <clears throat> so, I'm thinking, the, well, first solution is use this thing, which is a switch mode <laughs> regulator. Um, which goes up to 24 volts and this has 24 volts. This is absolute maximum rating is 26 for this So if you put this in we can only go up to the normal rate of voltage. So 32 and 24 uh, But we would like to have 39 now <clears throat> As I said, this is an analog circuit apparently because now this thing puts out like I don't know 800 millivolts or 1 volt or something um and the voltage goes up to 12 and 16 volts. Um, so if we just calculate a resistor divider to go from the 24 to uh, the input pin, so basically we have at 24 kind of 3.3 or 3.6 volts or maybe a bit more uh, to regulate the voltage up to 39 on the 32 volt rail. <coughs> Uh, that could work because it would continually rise up like I hope it should <laughs> yeah
Yeah, that's 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 the question question, right? <clears throat> Will it just continually rise up and well go too high or will it uh, work properly I think a resistor divider is a kind of risky business here but I'm gonna try it anyway <laughs> because I don't really don't want to put this piece in here that's just way overkill just to get 3.3 volts out here I mean this board of course somehow here has a 3.3 rail or whatever <coughs> so yeah okay next step wire this back in with a third wire so we can have a <coughs> resistor divider here with this thing and maybe we can actually get 3.3 volts then okay let's okay so apparently i was right and wrong this is not analog this is digital um, because at some point um, when i turn the pot it just jumps up to 24 volts and stays there so it jumps from 8 to 24 and on the other rail from 12 to 36 uh, just without any wiggle room so I cannot just turn it up and get a higher voltage but I at least can turn it on so that's something already and maybe then I can also <laughs> apply my uh, little hack over the opto isolator um, something that really annoys me about the power supply though is uh, this cap that's way too big <laughs> that the thing is this is still uh, on still power let's see uh, oop. voltage um, there's no resistor discharging it so this thing oh, apparently it went down now I guess because I switched on the power supply Strangely, this cap is still at okay. Yeah, that's uh, 32 volt rail. Right? That's still at 33.4. The other one has been discharged because of uh, the resistor that's across the power rail now, which is 100k. So, but usually when I just leave it and don't apply any power, uh, any load to it, this thing stays charged for several minutes, and that is at 340 volts. Because I don't. Um, if it's just rectified mains um, that that's not nice so I might put a resistor over it there's not really a place for it nothing is planned probably because it's encased in plastic let me see if I can find the plastic housing that's the plastic housing um, that's what it usually is in so I guess it's okay and you cannot touch any high voltage components when you uh, oh, when you have it in this case, does it say something about warning high voltage here? No. Oh well. <clears throat> anyway, it has this plastic thing which I also intend to continue to use after I'm done with this. And then I can finally cut up the cable here and use that for power output. <clears throat> um, so yeah. All I have to do is basically a resistor divider to get some voltage. Currently it's 0.7 volts and I think the reason why it just suddenly jumped up is because those are like both NPN or uh, bipolar transistors at least. So they both have a voltage drop of point uh, of yeah 0.7 volts <coughs> and currently the voltage is around 0.7 something. So because these usually have like 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 uh, that's probably where they start to turn on and as they are uh, bipolar transistors they are current amplifiers so with our previous solution even though we had uh, a voltage on here um, it either wasn't high enough or it didn't have enough current to push through because we well here there is a 1k um, protection resistor and we had 10k in series 
actually that doesn't really fly with what I'm doing now because well actually I, I didn't cha uh, check how much resistance I have but I guess to get the 0.7 volts out here well I'm, I'm gonna check the resistance of this real quick and then I'll tell you more um, how much we have <coughs> okay so we have 8 kilovolts and 78 kilovolts uh, not kilovolts ohms kilo ohms uh, so 8 and 78 so which is kind of a 1 to 10 ratio so probably because this has such a high resistance um, we are getting just that here um, I guess it should work <laughs> uh, because it's a current amplifier I don't think that matters much like it shouldn't change with load like this circuit is independent of load it's just dependent on the voltage um, that comes back from here and here the enable signal basically so 1 to 10 basically uh, that's kind of like 2.4 volts with the 24 volt rail so what I'm just going to do is uh, construct a resistor divider that just do does directly 3.3 from 24 volts put that in here and then that should work and it should turn on <clears throat> so I'm gonna build that and then we'll try it out okay it works um, this is plugged in at the moment so <laughs> I gotta be careful um, well this side is low voltage but this this other side here uh, high voltage anyway <clears throat> we have a 1.6 K and a 10 K resistor this is giving us I don't know like three volts I guess if there is no load applied to it um, I put it here and as soon as I plug it in it turns on with the full output voltage so that's nice <coughs> um, we have our full output voltage now and I have to solder these uh, resistors in the correct place now and then we're good to go we can at least have our 32 volts on the output and we did it now this is the top side <coughs> uh, I put the resistors on this side because there's way more space on this side and much less components to short out uh, than on the other side so I decided to just tack it on here only problem was uh, attaching it to the plug but yeah that's there now <coughs> and ta-da <laughs> uh, it works uh, it, when I plug it in it puts out the 32 and 24 volts um, it remains to be seen if the 32 volt rail stays uh, where it is if I don't put any load on the 24 volt rail because I still don't see how the 32 volt rail um, applies a load to the 24 volt rail because only the 24 volt rail goes to the opto isolator um, but yeah that remains to be seen I, I just hope it, it they didn't just purpose build it for the printer that will always use both voltages uh, equally and I hope it just works when I just use the 32 volt one <clears throat> okay so power supply modded I'll reassemble it and then I hope that these bearings come soon so I can replace them and try out the motor